I'm here with Meredith Bertese, the Vice President of Warp Speed at Palantir. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, by the way, such cool names in this industry. Warp Speed, I love it. We um, have fun with it, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, to start out with, what are some of the challenges defense organizations face when it comes to managing and analyzing data? Totally. I mean, you could think about the challenges for a, even a non-defense organization in manufacturing, the scale, the complexity. Oftentimes, they've made a lot of acquisitions, and so they might have dozens of source systems they need to work with. And then layer on top of that all the additional constraints working in the defense space with data access and restrictions, whether it's ITAR and CUI to fully air-gapped environments. Um, and then, of course, you need only U.S. persons or U.S. citizens working on it. So it's all of the sort of vanilla pain points of working with data at scale with all kinds of you know, additional, additional struggles layered in just from the nature of the work. You know, we heard a lot today about, you know, moving faster than the speed of our adversaries. But, you know, what, what are some of the impacts of not addressing some of these challenges when it comes to analyzing data? It's really twofold. The first is that you can be quite slow to realize when you have a problem. If you don't have full transparency into your entire production chain from supplier to final delivery, you might be caught very off guard by a potential bottleneck or downtime. And then the second is that even if you are able to identify a problem, say your production line goes down, uh, it's, it's really challenging to pivot and make a new plan in real time. I think Sham had a great quote recently that um, a plan is worthless, but planning is invaluable. You spend all this time learning and, and preparing, but if you don't actually have the agility to adapt, then there's really no point in a plan at all. Yeah, I think I, we heard the general talk about that a little bit this morning too. So where does Palantir step in? Well, Palantir uh, launched, launched our Warp Speed program last fall, which is our commitment to reindustrializing the U.S. We really believe that manufacturing is a national security issue, and so we're putting a, a team of our best engineers against it and building a new operating system, Warp Speed, for the modern manufacturer. What this looks like is different across all of our customers, but we're working on everything from um, bomb management and uh, engineering design and configuration management through supply chain and planning um, all the way to production scheduling and test and eval. Um, so if you imagine having all of those different decision makers connected and working off of the same tooling, uh, it really unlocks a whole new level of kind of infinite planning you could do against all of these different bottlenecks that crop up. Sure. So why is it so critical that governments and defense organizations embrace AI today? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really tough inflection point for the industry. There's kind of the perfect storm brewing. You've got, um, obviously, increased scrutiny on source of supply and where materials are, are coming from. There's a big shift even in the scale of the manufacturing. We heard this morning things are getting smaller and lighter and the volume is going up. Um, and then, you know, on, on top of all of that, there's more and more firm fixed fee programs coming out where a lot of the sort of back of office processes you, you might be used to are no longer feasible. Um, and to address all of those challenges, we're not gonna win on labor. We need to really lean into where the US has an advantage, which would be in software and AI. Um, not to get dark or anything, but can we talk about outcomes when some of these things, I guess, get in our way? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a mission-driven area of Palantir and is something that you know really gets me out of bed in the morning is thinking about um, all of the hardware we're working on, everything we do is through the lens of throughput. Um, and once that hardware is deployed in the field, making sure that you know it's, it's supporting our troops and allies and, and the warfighter on the front lines. So let's talk a little bit more about warp speed, your, your area. You mentioned it a little bit before. Um, what role does data play in the production of critical machinery and why is that so important? Yeah, it, it really can't be overstated enough. 
it's been such a pleasure of mine to go see many production facilities across the country where we're making some of the most advanced hardware you could imagine. And folks on the floor are doing this with pen and paper and whiteboards and erasers. Um, and I really view it as we need to remove the, you know, the burden of information finding from these operators so that they can do what they do best, which is building really, really cool shit. And um, in order to enable that, you need to get them out of Excel and get them out of email and get them off of a clipboard and into software that's actually gonna support their day-to-day -day operations and decision-making. So when you walk into those environments and you see all of that, does it just break your soul for a few minutes? It breaks my heart. I always tell, I always tell my users, my goal is no more Excel, no more copy-paste, no more VLOOKUP. The first thing you do when there's an issue shouldn't be try and find the data that tells you what the issue is. And, and it really gets back to the whole idea of agility and adaptability and, you know, Palantir loves to tout in our platform you should have N LLMs and I also believe you should have N production plans every day where the second something changes, you know, a, a lead engineer is homesick for the day. How do you make sure that you're still going to get the desired throughput that week when maybe a particular plan you are counting on is no longer feasible? Palantir and Oracle have been partnering together for some time. Can you talk about some of the details of the partnership and how this partnership is helping defense organizations um, innovate? Yeah, what's really exciting to me about the partnership, I think, is that we have such a shared mission. And we've really seen a lot of companies shy away from working in the defense and intelligence space. And of course, Palantir has never shied away, and I don't think Oracle has either. Um, and when we look at what is available to users in some of these really challenging or air-gapped environments, uh, oftentimes the, the technical toolkit is really below the bar. So um, it's you know impressive to me that Oracle's offering full feature parity. I think Palantir really shares the same mantra that we should be doubling down in these spaces and not shying away from the problem. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Meredith. Thank you for having me.